So, thank you for watching. I hope you find this video helpful. So, this is actually our exam preparation series where I do expect you have some understanding on the question that might be coming up. So, I'll be explaining all these core concepts on the question that will be coming up based on my understanding. So, it might be slightly different with what you have learned in your classroom. So, if you like this series of the video, feel free to leave us a like and subscribe to the channel. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, for the first topic that we will be covering today, this is actually the sequences topic. So, I separate it into two parts, where the part one, which is this video, we will be covering linear sequences and quadratic sequences. So, for linear sequences, okay, there will be three things that we need to do. Okay, the first one is to identify the term by term differences. Okay, next, how to find the zero term. And lastly, how do you combine these two information that we have gotten earlier and construct the n term equation? Okay, so for the first example, we have 21, 14, 7, unknown, and negative 7. So as you can see, the term by term differences is actually negative 7. So for you to identify the unknown, simply take the previous term, which is 7, minus it by 7, then you will get the unknown, which in our case this is actually 0. Okay? So Moving on, how do you, you identify the zero term? So all you need to do is to take 21, work it backwards by adding a 7 into it instead. So immediately you will get the zero terms as 28. The next thing you need to do is to combine the two variables together and construct the n term. So in our case, the n term sequences will actually be negative 7n plus 28 okay so for this type of question you can always take in and compare to check whether the equation that you've gotten is same with the question so in our case I actually took when the first term so let's try to identify the first term using the equation so all I need to do is take negative 7 times n plus 28 then you will get the results of 21 which matches the question. So this action actually proved that your answer equation is correct. So move on to example 2. So we have 3, 7, unknown, 15 and 19. So as you can see the difference, the term by term difference is actually 4. Okay. So simply add 7 by 4, then you will get the unknown as 11, okay? So the term by term difference is positive 4, and for you to get the zero term, simply take 3 minus 4, then you will get negative 1. So let's combine these two variables that we have gotten, and your final n term equation will actually be 4 and minus 1 okay so let's run a comparison to check whether our n term equation is correct or not so for example if i chose to find the fourth term okay so simply substitute 4 into the equation okay which goes by 4 times 4 minus 1 then you will get 15 so it matches with the question so your final equation is correct so that's all for linear sequences. So let's move on to our quadratic sequences. So for quadratic sequences, it is harder than linear sequences. However, the steps for you to approach this kind of question is somehow similar. First, we are required to identify the differences Next, you're required to check it okay, by doing the differences twice. 
okay, which I will explain how to do in the next slide. And lastly, if it fulfills certain condition, then you are able to substitute the value that you have gotten into a specific formula to drive up the end term equation. Okay, so let's jump into the question. So we have 4, 9, 16 and 25 here. Okay, so first thing that I'm going to do is to identify the difference which goes by 5, 7 and 9. Okay, so for you to identify the unknown at the back, so as you can see the trend is going, it's in odd number form. So which means if I were to add an 11 to 25, then I will get the unknown. However, this might not be applicable to all of the cases or the question. So you can just use this as a reference. You can only do so when the differences may be a odd numbers or even number different. Okay, so next thing you're required to do is to check the differences. Okay, so for number 5, 7 and 9, the differences is actually 2, which means the last row is the same. So with that being said, it fulfills the condition to substitute the value that we have gotten into a specific formula, which goes by 2a equals to the bottom row. So in our case, this is 2. 2a equals to 2. Then, 3a plus b equals to 5, okay, which is the middle row. And lastly, a plus b plus c equals to the top row, which is 4. So by running the calculation, you will end up with a equals to 1, b equals to 2, and c equals to 1. Okay, substitute it into the following formula, which goes by a n squared plus b n plus c. Okay, so after I put everything in, I will get n squared plus 2n plus 1. However, this is not the end. So for those questions that you are able to simplify, you are required to simplify it into the final form. So for this particular question, the final form of it is n plus 1 bracket squared. So these are the little things that you are required to take note for you to identify the n term. Okay? So I actually include this slide over here, which will come in really handy during your examination. So you can just memorize it or if you are familiar with algebra, you should have known this. Okay? So I will also create a algebra explanation video soon. So stay tuned for that. So if you like this series of the video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. So I will leave a link to part 2 in the video and to the other topic explanation. So thank you.